Um, as mentioned previously by a couple of people, our digital sales have been real standout performers for the past several years. Um, for the next few minutes, I'm going to be digging into those sales and talking about some of the strategies that we've been using to realize them. This chart shows the rapid growth in digital sales since 2008, which was the first year we started working with Amazon. We'd actually been uh, working with other digital partners uh, since long before that. In particular, we signed up with Books 24-7, uh, 24 by 7 in 2000, and um, so we, we got into the whole market early. Um, every single year that uh, we've been tracking it, we've been exceeding projections, uh, and it looks like that's going to be the case again in 2012. Uh, We're projecting just over 1.2 million in digital revenue, um, and through June, uh, we don't have all of our sales in yet, but once they are all in, it's looking like through the first six months of the year, we're going to be at 150 to 160 percent of plan for this channel. So. Okay, this graph shows how Barracolor is on a, a, a path to a business model that's increasingly dependent on digital revenues. Um, it's certainly gratifying to see the growth in this particular channel. Um, but the one thing I want to point out is that this, this isn't free money. There's a, a big misconception out there that a digital sale is dramatically cheaper to realize than a print book sale because it doesn't uh, have any shipping costs associated or printing costs and no returns. But those, those issues are, are just one part of a component of, of realizing an ebook sale. Um, we, Barracolor has had to make significant investments in personnel and infrastructure, um, which Rick is actually going to address in just a few minutes to, in order to enable us to achieve these sales. And we've also felt recently that, it, that given the, the growth in digital sales, it was only fair that we share this bounty with the authors. So we recently raised our digital royalty rates by another 5%. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's good. So what are the secrets to Barracolor's success in digital sales? More products to offer. Um, we have now effectively digitized the lion's share of our backlist. Uh, all, of our ba all of our front list is immediately, uh, simultaneously published with the print book in EPUB and PDF format. As David's going to be talking about in a little bit, we're also developing additional um, digital products such as enhanced books, uh, digital self-assessments, and Maria Jesus is doing some really creative things that are enabling us to um, effectively self-publish our audio titles. Secondly, we've seen really um, improved uh, uh, distribution and sales tracking. We work with Ingram's core source to warehouse and um, uh, and maintain our metadata, all the information that goes with the title, and then they distribute those t those to our customers for us, our, our partners like Amazon. They've made a great deal of improvement in the last couple of years um, in their own systems that has taken a lot of the friction out of the digital distribution process and greatly increased the accuracy of the ways in which our um, titles appear online. We're also paying close attention to the accounts that we do have. We're um, frequently running gap analyses to make sure that our partners have our full portfolio and that the information that's there is listed accurately. And we're really prioritizing developing human relationships at the accounts. A lot of these accounts would prefer to just deal with us through a, an automated interface, but we're finding that it really pays off big dividends if we actually track down a human being and work with them to develop promotions and, and work to solve problems that we have together. Um, we're aggressively pursuing new customers, big and small. We take a, a real open door policy towards all these creative new business models that are developing out there. Um, this is different from, say, a lot of New York um, publishing houses that are pretty slow to want to test the waters and, and are skittish. A lot of um, New York publishing houses, for example, won't work with digital libraries at all because they have big concerns that those sales are, that would be cannibalizing their print sales. And we haven't found that to be the case and, and we're very glad to be working with them. Um, last two points is uh, we think globally, uh, global thinking and acting and opportunistic pricing, two issues I'll just be talking about in a minute. So. Okay, so Bear Kohler now works with over 40 digital distribution partners. This document is in your packet if you wanted to take a look at it. Uh, more of them are emerging all the time, and whenever we hear about a new and exciting uh, new platform, uh, we call them up and try to do a deal with them. Our goal is to make sure that wherever the customer is, we're going to make those ebooks available to them. 
Um, the retail channel is, is probably the, the version that you're most familiar with, like Amazon, where one customer purchases one ebook. But we're seeing a lot of revenue and a lot of opportunity in all of these other channels as well. Um, the, uh, I think that the library and lending channel is one of the most exciting. There's a lot of innovation. There's a big race on for who's going to be the next Netflix or the first Netflix for ebooks or the Spotify for ebooks. There's a, lending is is going through some really creative things. So, and we're seeing some really good growth in that category. Um, I'd say the biggest underperformer in this, uh, and another outstanding is audio. Again, thanks to all the work that Maria Jesus is doing. Underperformer for us is e-textbooks. We're really not seeing much uh, happen with that. Um, part of my theory on why that is is that we're not actually um, able to have our content in the biggest and the most popular platforms. Those platforms are proprietary platforms owned by the large publishing companies that aren't really interested in having other publishers' content in their systems competing with them. So that's, that's a nut we still need to crack, um, and, and we're, we're working on it. But if, if anybody in this room knows of a platform where you buy ebooks or digital content and you don't see Barrett Kohler's content there, please give us a call and we'll make sure that we get on that. Okay, so here you can see a breakdown of the revenues by channel. Clearly, Amazon is dominating. Um, Bear Kohler had talked, we talked internally on the digital team about having a goal of um, having at least 50% of our digital revenue coming from partners other than Amazon. Um, we have not uh, yet succeeded in that, but that's something that we've got in our head um, that we would like to try. Um, I'd say that most publishers, um, uh, certainly any publishers that weren't allowed to be on the agency model are probably seeing 70% uh, or more of their revenue coming from Amazon. So I think we're kind of ahead of the curve. Um, Barnes & Noble are also have been showing encouraging inroads in terms of the market share. Those are, those are growing. We're going to be doing some, some good promotions with Barnes & Noble coming up too. And Books 24 by 7 has been a standout performer ever since we signed up with them in 2000. So that's a great corporate channel for us. Ebrary and Overdrive uh, are um, two library channels that are doing really great and feeling, we're feeling optimistic that they're going to continue to grow. Of the name brand platforms, I'd say the biggest number of performers is, is surely Google. Um, that's, they have, they just haven't really invested in making a platform that's really reader, customer friendly, and I think a lot of publishers are frustrated with them. Rapid international expansion. So as I mentioned earlier, we, we make a concerted effort to work with local ebook distributors in foreign markets. Um, this graphic shows just a sampling of the partners that we're either talking to right now or have already signed deals with to distribute our content overseas. Now, we could just sit around and wait for Amazon or Apple or Google to roll out into all of the markets that they aren't in now, and, and they'll get there eventually. But they're actually being pretty pokey about some markets that we would really like to be into right now. Um, for example, in Singapore, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of potential in Singapore, and they don't really have any, uh, any of the big American conglomerates there, which is why we're, we're talking to Scoob. Um, and uh, also, it's our, it's our feeling that the local players are likely to have better insight and know their customers better, and they actually might be able to better realize sales than, say, a, a global company that, that doesn't know anything about the idiosyncrasies of the Singapore market. Lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our pricing strategy. Um, uh, for digital content. Um, in most cases, uh, we don't have a whole lot of control over the prices of our digital content. Uh, um, that's because we're on the wholesale model with most of the retailers where we offer the ebooks to the retailer at a discount and then they decide how much of that discount to pass along to the customer. And it's really up to them. Um, but there are some situations in which we do have uh, the opportunity to test, and I want to talk through some of those with you. Um, certainly on our own website, bkconnection.com, on the left there, um, you can see how we've done some um, testing on 99 cent sales and to sell chunk content. Um, also, we've been, uh, since the beginning of this year, we decided to price our library content at a premium um, because we felt that that was, that was fair, given that the libraries are lending the same ebook over and over and over again to successive uh, um, patrons of the library. And, um, and actually, our, it hasn't hurt our sales. Where they, our net sales have been, our units and net sales have been growing in the library account since then. And the most dramatic success that we've had with 
retail promotions um, have been through Barnes and Noble and Amazon. In June, we ran a, a, a daily deal promotion for I Moved Your Cheese um, that increased the single day sale average for us by 20 times. We also ran an Amazon promotion for that same book in a, a single day promotion in, uh, earlier this year that sold 16,000 units in a single day. And our promotion for Eat That Frog on January 3rd through Amazon sold 19,000 units in a single day. So you know these promotions, they, they're, they're, they're worth the price decrease if you can get them out effectively with the partners. So in sum, the right price for an ebook is very much in question. Um, we plan to continue testing and um, adapting our strategies based on data and analysis as it comes in.